There are five organic realities of faith. Number one is persuasion. Anybody you see who will walk and sustain faith must be persuaded. If you are not persuaded, you cannot walk in the corridor of faith. When you see a man who does not change his conviction, it's because he's persuaded. In Romans chapter 4, verse 21, you see the life of Abraham. God told him, you will be the father of many nations. And the Bible said in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope, that he will be the father of many nations. And in verse 19, he said, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. Why? He said, he did not consider his body now dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. Why? Why did Abraham defy circumstances? Why did Abraham not consider his body dead? Why did Abraham believe hope against hope? In verse 21, he tells us why. He said the reason Abraham was able to stand in faith is because he was fully persuaded that what God promised, he was able to perform. Many people have not sat down to be persuaded in the word of God. They think the word of God is another religious text. So they approach it religiously. And when it doesn't work like magic, they change their minds. A man of faith comes to that point where he tells himself, I'm not believing God for him to answer. If God answers, that's fine. Even if he doesn't answer, I still believe. Because the Bible says some died in faith. So we are not just believing God because he answers. Should in case, this is what the three Hebrew boys know. Our God is able to deliver us from your hands. But even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. Our generation thinks faith is all about answer. And so every time we talk faith, we say God answers. So because we have taught people that faith is just answer, answer. When they don't get answers, they turn away and start looking for answer with Babalao. Faith is not just about answer. Yes, faith produces answers. But faith is a life. It's a life of full persuasion and conviction in God that God is beyond the answer. But can I tell you, you cannot be persuaded until you meditate on the word. Because that's when you plant the word in your heart. That's when the word becomes more real to you than even the answer. Meditation on the word of God. You talk the word of God to yourself until the word of God is rooted in you. So much so that you think, talk and live the word. The second dimension of the organic elements of faith is witnesses. The witnesses of the Holy Spirit. Why persuasion comes from the word of God, the witnesses of the Holy Ghost are promptings of the Spirit. I'm telling you how men rise and stand. Men don't rise and men don't stand because there are no crises. In fact, those who are standing and making impact, they suffer more crises than those who are not. But the reason you find them standing are things like this. When everything seems to go down, they carry a verse of scripture and they say, Lord, I believe you. Persuasion. And then sometimes when things appear to be failing, a whisper comes from the Holy Ghost. They know the promptings of the Holy Ghost and they follow those promptings meticulously. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22, hear what the great apostles said. Talking about the Holy Spirit, this is Paul's understanding of the Holy Ghost. He said, God has sealed us by his spirit because when he put his spirit in our heart, he gave a commitment of himself. He said, the earnest of the spirit. So God's commitment to us is in the Holy Ghost that is in our heart. So Paul did not just see the Holy Ghost as a phenomenon. He didn't just see the Holy Ghost as an experience. He saw the Holy Ghost as God's insurance system. So whenever there is a crisis, he reverts to that insurance. That insurance becomes Paul's faith strength. And in Galatians chapter 4 verse 6, hear what Paul said. That this Holy Ghost that is our insurance is not just quiet on our inside. He said, and because you are sons, he said, God have sent forth his spirit heart send forth his spirit or the spirit of his son into our hearts crying Abba Father so that's the witness of the Holy Spirit Paul said there is something the Holy Ghost is saying on our inside and so sometimes you come to a hopeless state 
and then you hear it is well. It is well does not mean the credit alert has appeared. It is well does not mean what was lost has been found. It is well does not mean you have left or you have been discharged from the hospital. It is well means the Holy Ghost is in charge. And so Paul said, so long as the Holy Ghost is crying in our hearts, we will stand in faith. This is the key these wise men had. And this is why they lived such an invincible life. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 15 to verse 17. Organic elements of faith. He said, for you have not received the spirit of bondage. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. He said, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You saw that in Galatians 4, 6, the Holy Ghost was the one crying. Now you are crying in consonance with the Holy Spirit. So what the Holy Ghost is saying is what you are saying. Because you are following that prompting. Go to verse 16. He said, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit. The Holy Ghost is not dormant on our inside. He beareth witness with our spirit. In this case, that we are the children of God. But this is not the only witness the Holy Ghost bears. There are other times when you are going through a place, you know there is danger. It appears as if you are finished and the Holy Ghost tells you, fear not. You will not die. That witness will become the reason why you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, men of faith hear things. They are not just walking with uh, boldness. They are hearing things on their inside. When Paul was involved in a shipwreck, they were first of all hungry for 14 days. There was nothing to eat. And then when they saw the wind coming, they knew they were finished. The, 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 the prison officer wanted to kill all the prisoners so that they don't escape. Paul said, don't hurt anybody. He said, the Lord whose I am and who I serve, he said, was with me yesterday and told me there shall be no loss of life. So when you see a man of faith walking, there is a witness of the Holy Spirit. But you see, there are two ways of keeping the witness of the Holy Ghost. Number one is by not quenching the Spirit. And number two is by not grieving the Spirit. How do you quench the Holy Ghost? You quench the Holy Ghost by not doing what He says you should do. So if you are sitting now and the Holy Ghost says, Stand up, go right. And you now sit down and say, ah, Stand up, go right. Why? You look around, you look around. That witness will go down. Over time, you will not hear it again. If you are sitting and the Holy Ghost says, Bless this person with 5,000. And you say, uh -uh, How much do I have? <laughs> I'm talking about help. You are saying, Bless someone. <laughs> Lord, help me. That's <laughs> where well, the last conversation we had is help me. <laughs> when did it change from help somebody? After a while, that witness will go down. You have quenched the spirit. He said, quench not the spirit that is in you. And how do you grieve the Holy Ghost? You grieve the Holy Ghost by doing what he says you shouldn't do. So on one hand, you are not doing what he says you should do. You quench him. On another hand, you are doing what he says you should not do. You grieve him. And so people who have the witness of the Holy Ghost, there are two things they watch out for. They don't quench the spirit and they don't grieve the spirit. If you live your life like that, you will discover that Ghost will be so intimate with you that sometimes even the clothes you want to wear, he will bear witness. You are about going out to touch a dress, he says no. Because he's the one who controls your life. Maybe the person he's sending you to loves white. This is not about uh, all of these magical teachings that people use colors. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you the intelligence of the Holy Ghost. I may be going to meet a man that the Holy Ghost has arranged to favor me. And the Holy Ghost knows that man lost white. I go to my wardrobe, I carry red. He says, no. You can mess this meeting up by the color you are wearing. No. If you don't know the witness of the Holy Ghost, you will enter with red. And when the man looks at you, he hates red so much. Because the last time he had a nightmare, all the nightmares he has been having is red they wear. And the moment you appear, you appear like his nightmare. Say, please, wait outside. He will send the secretary, tell him I'm busy. And you will miss that opportunity. So even your wardrobe, the Holy Ghost can bear witness. As you enter, the moment you touch white, you say, mm. you will just sense the anointing. As though the anointing now responds to clothes. It's a witness. You wear that white, you show up. The moment the man sees you, like a, you are like an angel. It's not even about the conversation anymore. He said, don't worry. Just go, it is done. 
and then you are wondering what happened is the witness of the Holy Ghost but you see your life will not be that supernatural if you keep quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit the third organic dimension of faith is prayer faith cannot work without prayer just as faith cannot work without love if your life is not full of prayer your faith will go down not too long in fact there are three forces that control faith prayer love and a good conscience the bible said in galatians 5 8 it says faith walked by love in ephesians 1 19 they say holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have she pregnant their faith and in jude verse 20 say building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so any man who will stay standing because of faith must stay standing by prayer the fourth organic reality of faith is the proceeding word of god every time a man functions in faith a word came to him it is those words that comes to you that activates your faith because every faith needs activation when the word comes faith is activated that's why in matthew 4 4 he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He said in Psalm 105 verse 17, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king now sent for him. So faith will not work until there is a proceeding word. The moment the word of God comes, it opens the door of faith. It activates the gates of faith. This is why you must prepare your life. Stay under an atmosphere where the word of God travels. Always build an atmosphere where the word of God travels. Sometimes you can be in a bathroom and God tells you, go to Lagos and take over. Because you picked it. If you move on the strength of that word, Lagos will be too small for you. And so every faith giant hears God concurrently. The word of God keeps coming to him. And when you hear some people speaking, they will tell you, God told me. God told me. God told me. Because you can't build anything remarkable if you didn't hear God's voice. Till tomorrow, the raw material for creation and for building is the word of God. And that's why for any faith to generate result, there must be the proceeding word of God. There must be the proceeding word of God. And finally, the fifth organic dimension of faith is action. No matter your persuasion, no matter the witness of the Holy Ghost, no matter your prayer, no matter the rema, if you don't take action, you will never see faith answer. In James 2, 19 and 20, he said, Thou believest that there's only one God. He said, Thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. He said, But O ye vain man, he said, Knoweth not thou that faith without works is dead. So many have faith, but the faith is dead because there's no action. In James 2, 26, same scripture, he said, As the body without the spirit is dead, it says, so also faith without works is dead. Many have heard God. Many have conviction. The only problem is that they've not taken action. They have sat in one place for five years. If you want to arise by faith, you must start taking action. Because what makes your faith produce results are the actions of faith that you take. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oroho, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.